our Lord, and I know he'll bless you back. Amen? Amen. So brothers and sisters, I'm just Joe, no title. I'm a servant of Jesus. I'm just a lowly vessel trying to make the world a better place. And today's message is about being a servant of the Lord. And so if you brought your Bibles, please turn with me to the book of James chapter 1. And we will read verse 1. James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. So here, the apostle James is calling himself a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And so now, the next passage we'll read, turn with me to the book of Romans, chapter 1, and we'll start reading at verse 1. Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared to be the son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. Amen, brothers and sisters. Man, I mean, that's what we base all our faith on. You know, God prophesied that the Messiah, Jesus, would come. In the books, the prophetic books of Isaiah, Jeremiah, Psalms. And he did come from heaven and was born in the seed of David to be in human form, to die a suffering death for you and me, and was buried and rose. Praise God. Praise Yeshua. That's how you say Jesus in Hebrew. Amen? Amen. So that you and I could live forever and ever someday with our Lord and Savior, Jesus. It doesn't get any better than that. Amen? Amen. And so... I want to point out that Paul, the Apostle Paul here, he too calls himself a bondservant of Jesus Christ. Now in the dictionary, bondservant means slave. That's right, brothers and sisters, slave. You and I are a slave to the Lord. And in the word here, it says his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. If you look in the dictionary, you will find Lord means master. So we take our Lord and Savior as our master, our teacher, our example. Believe his doctrine and obey him. Amen? Amen. So brothers and sisters, if you're not living for Jesus, you can't be saved. If you don't take him as your master, remember the slaves in America in the 1800s, around 1860? If a slave, let's say, wanted to go to town to buy candy for his children, could he go either with a chaperone or without a chaperone without asking the owner of the plantation if he could go? He had to, right? Yes. And so, we have to ask our Lord. We have to obey our Lord and Savior, our Master. Now, let me tell you something that happened to me this week. I bent down to pick something up and I hurt my back. And when we injure ourselves or have a health problem, we always need to examine ourselves. Am I being chastened because of something I've done? Have I got into perpetual sinning? Because that can happen to us, become a prodigal son or get into willfully sinning in a particular area. God will chasten us to bring us back. We know that. He says he only chastens the ones he loves. And he says, if you haven't been chastened, you're not his. So I right away, I'm thinking, what did I do? What have I been doing? And I came to the conclusion that 
I wasn't being chastened, that I had still been walking with the Lord, obeying him, loving him, and in com communing with him daily with the word of God in prayer. And so for three days, my back hurt until I woke up. I got on my knees and I prayed to God, the Father, in Jesus' name, to heal my back. And it was healed like that. You see, I was being chased in for something I did not do. I did not humble myself to the Lord and ask him, plead to him to heal me. Right? Just because you're a Christian, you know, doesn't mean that everything is going to be great all the time. We know that. We get chased in at times. And we're going to go through some trials. He has to test our faith and love. But he wants communication. He wants us to ask him to heal us. And then he wants us to praise his name for it. So I'm praising him today for healing my back and saving me from damnation, from going to hell by dying on the cross for me and being buried and arising. Oh, how lucky we are, brothers and sisters. He says he allows us to call him friend if we obey him. That's what the word says. But never think you're so close to God that you can do whatever you want. And I thought I was so close to God that I didn't have to ask him to heal me. He's just going to go ahead and do it. No, brothers and sisters, we have to humble ourselves to the Lord every day. He is our master. We are his slave. We have to keep that in mind. Amen? Amen. Brothers and sisters, we always need to humble ourselves. We always need to be humble. He makes it very clear when the disciples are arguing who's going to be the greatest in heaven. He brings a little child and he puts him in the midst. And he says, unless you are like this little child, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. And he goes on to say that if you humble yourself like this little child, you'll be the greatest in heaven. So brothers and sisters, always stay humble. Always obey him. He says, why do you call me Lord and not obey me? And not obey my commandments. Right? Remember, Lord means master. Why are you calling me master and you're not doing what I say? Now, he knows you're going to make mistakes when you're walking with Jesus, even when you have the Holy Spirit, okay? You will make mistakes. Only Jesus was perfect. He's the only one that walked the earth perfect. But we ask for forgiveness with remorse in our hearts, and we are forgiven. Amen? Amen. So praise God. Praise Yeshua. Because he nailed our sins to that cross, and he redeemed us back to him, and our sins are forgiven. Amen. But does it mean we don't have to ask? Yes, we do. Just like I had to ask to have him heal my back, we have to ask for forgiveness daily, at night, before you go to bed. Ask him for forgiveness for any sins you may have done that day. Even sins you may have done that you didn't know were sins. Okay? All right. Brothers and sisters, God, our Lord, our Savior Jesus is coming back for his virgin church. And he's coming back in our generation, and you got to be right with God when he comes. Don't be left behind. He gives a scenario in Matthew of ten virgins. Five of them have oil, five do not. Virgins represents purity. They're good people. Christians, in name. But... Five of them have the oil. That's the Holy Spirit. And they get to go up for the wedding. They are ready for the wedding. And that's when Jesus is going to come to take up his church. And those that are ready are going to get married to him. Symbolically. You understand? But the ones that do not have the oil, though they're going to church, though they read their Bible, they're not living for God 100%. 
they're keeping that one sin that they so love to do. If you have trash in the trunk, God is not going to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Not everybody gets the Holy Spirit at the same time. But when you give your life 100% to God, to our Lord and Savior, then He fills you with the Holy Spirit, renews your mind completely from that carnal mind. He turns it into a Christian mind. And He renews that stony heart into a pure, circumcised heart. That's what the Word of God says, and He does it. And so if you don't have the fruits of the Spirit, which we find in Galatians 5, 22, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Okay? If you do not have those, you do not have the Holy Spirit. And the key is love. God says he is love. And if Jesus is inside of you, part of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, you're going to have love, and you will have all of those fruits of the Spirit. And when somebody is coming to know the Lord and he's said the prayer of repentance and he repents genuinely in his heart, you will see those fruits of the Spirit in that person. You, they will have that love of Jesus in their heart and you will see a change. And you will see a change in yourself if you're working towards that now. But don't be left behind. Because... In the parable of the ten virgins and the five not having the oil and the five that did went up, which is the Holy Spirit. In verse 10, it reads, the bridegroom came, that is Jesus, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut. Afterwards, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, As surely I say to you, I do not know you. You see, brothers and sisters, when Jesus comes in the sky for his virgin church, you've got to be ready. Because if you're not, and you do not have the Holy Spirit, that door is shut. Just like the Word of God says, and it cannot lie. And then he says, I do not know you. Depart from me, you're going to be cast into outer darkness into the lake of fire and brimstone where the fire is never quenched and the worm doesn't die, which is the soul, where there's wailing, weeping, gnashing of teeth, being tormented for eternity, never having rest, day and night. You do not want that. So if you're not right with God yet, get right because he's coming in our generation. And if you have not given your life to the Lord, brothers and sisters, do it today. Do it today. I will lead you in a prayer of repentance. If that's you. Because Jesus says, no one comes to me except the ones the Father draws. And so if God the Father is drawing you to be saved today, if you feel a tugging on your heart to say this prayer of repentance, please bow your heads and repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I humbly come before your throne. Dear Father, forgive me for all the sins that I have done. I am a sinner. And Father, thank you for sending your Son to die on the cross for me, for my sins, to redeem me, Lord. Please, Lord, help me to renew this carnal mind. Help me to make the changes I need to make. To repent 100%. Please fill me with the Holy Spirit, Lord. Renew this stony heart into a pure loving heart, Lord. Please, Father. And your will always be done, Lord, not mine. I pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. So if you said that prayer, you made an oath to the Lord to repent, to change your mind, to renew your mind. You're asking the Lord for help 
But you have to do your part. Right? You need to make proper changes. The first thing is get rid of evil company. He says you need to be evenly yoked. What does righteousness have to do with lawlessness? So if you've been going to the bars, you need to stop. If you've been partying with people, you need to stop hanging around with those people. You've got to change your lifestyle. And when you change your lifestyle and you start walking with Jesus, obeying him, he says, if you love me, obey me. And the ones that love me, he says, I will love and the father will love and I will manifest myself into you. And that means he will fill you with the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters. So do that. Make those proper changes. And find a Bible teaching church, a Christian church, a genuine Christian church that preaches the truth. If they're not reading out of the Bible, 